This is Leaders Who Scale, and I'm Jeff Siegel. I've worked with thousands of companies over the years, and I'm fascinated by seeing how many of them grow and scale. Join me as we learn from the leaders of growing companies and share that knowledge. Leaders Who Scale is sponsored by Siegel Solutions, providing world-class accounting, advisory, and QuickBooks and Acumatica Cloud ERP services. Today's guest has worn many hats throughout her career in customer service, office management, operations, operations analysis. She started this landscaping business with her husband in 2010 with zero experience, working out of a 400 square foot trailer at a horse farm where they had to mow the lawn and maintain the property just to pay the rent. She's helped to grow the company from just two of them up to 13 employees now. They own and work out of a 4,800 square foot commercial building and they're continuing to scale and grow. She is the co-owner and man, office manager of Friesen Landscaping out of Lincoln, Nebraska. I want to welcome Danny Friesen. How are you doing, Danny? I'm good. How are you, Jeff? Good. Thank you. Thanks for being on today. Yes. Excited to be here. Yeah. I'd love to hear your story. Um, it's, it's, it's great. You started out with just you and your husband out of a, a trailer and... Um, seems like you're growing nice and steadily and lo love to hear how you're doing it. So my, my first question is, and I ask everyone this, what is the most challenging aspect of growing and scaling a business or your business, I should say? Well, there's been a lot of challenges over the past 12 years, but um, probably some of the most challenging things of, are, of course, employees, you know, mm -hmm. turnover, especially when you first start, you don't really know what kind of person you want. You know, you just need somebody to come help you do the work and the work is not the easiest job in the world. You have to work in the elements. You have to work when it's hot outside or when it's cold outside. So that was definitely always challenging. And honestly, just finding someone who cared finding someone who would show up and who would care about the outcome of the work that they did. That's mm -hmm. definitely been a challenge. Cash flow was always a good challenge that you have to deal with when you're a brand new company. And it's something that we definitely are continuing to work on until this day. And until recently, it's something that has always been a concern, but we put some things in place that are helping us with that. Mm -hmm. And then currently probably our biggest thing is as we continue to get bigger and we have this bigger space that we can operate out of, we really need systems and processes installed within our company to be able to allow our employees to pretty much lead our company or run our company and allow my husband and I to actually work on our company instead of constantly working in our company. So definitely the three biggest challenges we've experienced over the last 12 years. So That's a lot of challenges. Um Talking yeah. about working in versus on that last point, um, is it, it must be a big transition um, between, with you and your husband. Yeah, it Doing is. And it's something we definitely still struggle with, to be honest with you. Um, I can go from being in the office to being on a phone call to handling the finances to running out to go run an errand for the guys to handling something that's an emergency or someone has a flat tire, or, mm -hmm. you know, it can basically be just about anything throughout the day. So it's having those people there for us that we can definitely send them to go do that kind of stuff, or just to basically help us out, you know, it's, yeah. it's still a struggle. So. so talking about your team, because I think you said you're, uh, we're, you're up to about 13, give or take. Yeah. Um, are they... Are you grooming people to move into more manager type positions or, you know, you know, it's, or is it, are you still looking for that next type of hire to help kind of you grow the business? I think until this last year, we have definitely struggled in finding people who had a passion and who wanted to stick around and finding somebody who was definitely a, just a genuinely born leader, which is very hard to find. But I mean, most of our guys that we have working for us have worked for us for the longest is nine going on 10 years, one of our foremans. Um, most of the other guys are two years going on three. And then the the younger guys that work for us have worked for us for a year going on two. And 
you know, they're the new generation and they're coming in and they're kind of teaching us some things about how we can lead our company and just basically do some things differently. So we've got a really good team. So. Yeah. And what was the earlier on, uh, as I mentioned in your kind of bio, you started with like zero landscaping experience. What's what's that been like for you um, to, in the past 12 years or so? It was a lot easier in the beginning to say that's not my problem because I didn't understand it. You know, if a trailer broke down or if somebody needed to hop in the skid loader and run it for a day because somebody was sick or something, you know, I didn't have to do that kind of work. So it was less like, oh, it's just Danny. She just, you know, runs the numbers and writes the checks or whatever. And now it's more of like, you know, I know things. I know how to operate the skid loader. I know how to change the oil if I needed to. I know how to hook up a trailer. I know how to drive the truck. So sometimes that can be a good thing and sometimes it can be a bad thing, but there's the small things that I've learned. And then, you know, there's the things that I've learned over the years and in the financial part of our business as well. So it's definitely all been a learning experience, but I've tried to take everything I've learned from my past experience, whether it would have been in retail, serving people food, um, being an office assistant, you know, whatever it may have been to just take those experiences and turn them over to my employees and turn them over to our customers, most of all, because at the end, it's all about customer experience and what your customer is getting as an end result. So, I, I noticed on your, uh, your website, you do a lot of, I guess I'd call hardscaping, right? Uh, retaining walls and, you know, um, things like that. Do you do a lot uh, like landscaping from a, like a mowing, like maintenance as well? Or is it mostly like larger projects, pavers, patios, things like that? So we have three crews that run currently. We have two hardscape crews. Um, they're both usually installing pavers, doing patios, water mm -hmm. features, um, retaining walls, all of that fun stuff, all the stuff that we love to do. And then we also try to offer uh, maintenance and mowing to some of our commercial or customers who have been with us for a really long time who just want the full service. Um, it's It can be unique to find somebody who has the skill set to kind of see everything and take care of everything for a customer. Um, so when you're there doing the landscaping, but you're also in charge of doing the mowing and maintenance, like kind of have to landscape your way out of their yard or hardscape your way out and clean up the messes you've made. But then it also affects your maintenance and mowing crew as well. So Definitely communication is key to the maintenance and mowing side of our business and staying on top of it and keeping in communication with our customers as to what's going on on a week to week basis. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. You mentioned earlier also um, cash flow. So it's always like cash is the lifeblood of every business. And you had said you, you know, recently you, you kind of put things in place to help that. Is that just like banking relationships or how, how do you handle your cash flow? Well, I think there's honestly, I'm glad you asked me this question. <laughs> there, there are three things that I feel like are so important. You have to buy from vendors who have your back 100% and put a product out there that they're going to stand behind. If there is an issue, that's definitely going to affect your cash flow. Say you were to put a paver patio down and for some reason there would be a manufacturer issue with the pavers that you installed. What are you going to do if you have to rip those out? What mm -hmm. is that vendor's warranty? I mean, think about if you put a $20,000 paper patio down for somebody and you were a new business, what could that cost you in the long run? So finding vendors who stand behind you and stand behind their products and your customers is such a big deal. Um, also teaming up with professionals like finding a good accountant finding a good lawyer, finding a good banker who's going to be there for you. Say you have a big commercial job coming up and you're like, hey, this job is going to cost us this much money. Can you help us get through this from beginning to end? You know, those are, are definitely 
some things that are important. And then probably the other thing that is really important is putting some systems in place that can help you learn your profit and loss from the start of a job to the end of a job. And a system we use now is called Synced Up, and it's actually built and made exclusively for landscape professionals. So it, it does basically everything for us. We do our budgeting, we do profit and loss on a job, but it also does all our day-to-day -day operations like taking our leads, our consultations to our customers, our estimates, doing contracts, um, tracks when a customer approves a job, we can schedule our jobs in there. We do invoicing um, so much. It's been yeah. such a game changer for us to see exactly when we're doing an estimate it will tell you like you're only going to make x amount of percentage on this job so it's it's been a really big game changer for us and we're also looking into some newer things you know it's always important to reach out to people who are in who have been successful in the financial industry mm -hmm. and to learn from those people and get some pointers from them. So there's some items that uh, a few people have suggested. I don't know if you've ever heard of a P card before. I haven't. No. What's what is that? So it's basically like a corporate card, but instead of just being a corporate card, it can push out your, say you have a vendor to pay and their invoice is net due 30 days. Mm hmm you can pay your vendor if they take a Visa or MasterCard with your P card and then it pushes out your terms to pay for that invoice 30 days out. So you're keeping your vendors happy. You're uh -huh. keeping everybody who you need to pay paid so they come back and do work for you. But it's giving you an opportunity to make sure everything with your customers is settled up from your jobs and that you can go ahead and pay that when that money comes in. So it's like getting ter longer terms. It's credit, right? Yeah. Pretty that's much. It basically right. is. But, you know, you really have to manage that like you would be managing um, a line of credit from your bank. It's basically the same thing, but giving you longer terms to pay that off. So, yeah. I I'm glad you mentioned systems because I think a lot of companies that I've seen just as an accountant and a, you know, QuickBooks consultant and advisor, they're afraid to invest in like a system. I'm sure that the one you mentioned earlier, there was a big investment. There was to purchase it, um, to training, starting to use it, you know, um, and, and people are reluctant to spend that upfront cost. I mean, I'm sh you said it was a game changer. What was it like almost before that using that system? And now that you do use that system for like estimates and invoicing and P and L's and budgets, it, is it night, was it night and day? More or less. Night and day for sure. Um, yeah. We weren't what we weren't able to watch our numbers. We didn't know what our budget was. We didn't. We never knew how much money we were going to make till the end of the year. And you kind of just hoped that it would all turn out the way that you hoped it would be. Mm -hmm. um, you did your best to do a profit and loss, but most likely you were missing something in your calculation or something. And when you have something that tracks a hundred percent of your expenses and the labor that's being put onto the job, it definitely shows you not only what you're making, but what you should be charging on the next job that's similar to that. You yeah. know, you're making sure you're not going below what you need to make, but there's always an opportunity there too, then to help save somebody some money. If you know you have that put in within your estimate, then somebody's like, can you sharpen your pencil? Well, yeah, we definitely can go back and take a look at that. And you can see how it affects your numbers immediately when you make the change. So what has the supply chain issues caused, caused any problems in the business? Like if you have to buy pavers or I mean, I'm not sure how far out you bid these jobs and then the pricing of, of things change. Is that, has that had much of an impact on what you guys do? Yeah, most of our jobs are about... I would say three to six months out. Um, six months is a stretch. That can be kind of difficult um, sometimes. Uh, you definitely have to order product now two or three months in advance most of the time, especially when you're talking about a big job. Um, definitely getting those products ordered ahead of time and getting things on the schedule and getting them in and coming. I mean, it's a lot different if you're doing a 300 square foot patio than if you're doing a 1200 square foot patio and you need a couple semis as opposed to just, you know, half of a truck. So we definitely 
have to make sure we order things in advance when we have a bigger job. So immediately when we get to the point in our workflow system where we have to order the materials, we get it ordered as soon as we get the approval from the customer and we just get it out there and get it done. So do your customers typically pay uh, for these products deposits? I assume they, yep. right? Yeah. Uh, I guess for me as a consumer myself, I don't feel comfortable paying 40 or 50% down. Um, I wouldn't do that myself. So I don't expect my customers to, to do that depending on the size of the job. But most mm -hmm. of the time we just require a 10% down payment to get the materials ordered. Yeah. So, That's good. Yep. Yep. As far as planning for growth, are you, do you have a, like a, a number in mind, like where you're trying to get to as far as maybe number of employees or how big, how many crews you want? Uh, is there something that you and uh, your husband are kind of trying to plan and, and you do that um, intentionally? Or is it just, hey, we're just going to grow and hire as we need them? <laughs> well, that's what it's been in the past. And that's not easy. So yeah, um, I definitely am the one who does more of the strategic forward thinking. And he's more in the day to day processes, keeping the crews going and keeping the jobs moving. He's mm -hmm. more like I would say the project manager, um, as well as the president. But yeah, we're definitely always forward thinking and we never thought we would want more than two crews and we thought we would always be just family owned and operated, which we are, but we never thought that we would want to grow beyond the point where we are right now. So definitely we're looking um, to grow. We always have a goal of where we would like our revenue to be for the year. And I always try to add a little bit in every year, you know, to keep growing. But there's definitely some hiring that we need to do and some changes that we need to make to get past the level that we're at currently. So who's the uh the the salesperson in the in the company <laughs> my husband does it all yeah so he's out there meeting with he meets the customers, the customers. Yeah. he does the <laughs> estimating um another good hire that we made this year is we added an office assistant we have never had an office assistant prior to this um and she came in and kind of is whipping us into shape and she's helping us with the estimating process as well as doing some of the data entry things and um, it's been great to have somebody that we can rely on to help us with some of that so it's been a big change and I think until recently it's been hard for us to accept that help but now we're getting used to it and we can definitely see that you know in the future we need to probably hire another estimator you know, because in the spring when things are busy and things fly, the door goes open and it doesn't shut until June. And it's, you know, 10 appointments or more every week, but you're still trying to keep the crews running. Um, it's just a lot of balls in the air. You're trying yeah. to catch everything and keep it running. Um, yeah, we definitely see the need for probably an estimator in the future. So. Yeah. Yeah. Do you yourself get out? I mean, you mentioned earlier, you know how to change the oil and drive, yeah. drive a skid and like uh, how yeah. often are you out of the office yourself um, or were you the early days was probably a lot different than it is today for you? Yes. In the early days, I actually did all the mowing and maintenance myself while I was working a full time job. So I would literally I asked my work if I could um, get off early on a Thursday, work a seven to four schedule get off of work early on a Thursday at noon. I would drive my truck and trailer to work. I would mow all day after work and I would mow all day on Friday. And I did all the mowing and maintenance myself while working full time. So yeah, now I don't have to go do that unless somebody has a planned vacation or isn't feeling well. But mm -hmm. you know, with 13 employees, um, they definitely help us out in that area when we need help. So I don't have to go do that. I do consult with customers on container planting. So if you wanted flowers planted on your front porch in your pot, I do 100% of that work. I do the consultation, estimating and installing for that. So wow. that's a lot of what what I do most of the time. Yeah. So. Who would who would be your next um, management hire? You mentioned like you, an estimator, but like if you're growing the company and it sounds like you're, you're doing a lot of the planning from a strategy point of view. 
would you, do you see someone else coming in to help with that? Or, you know, if you had five or seven more people coming in, just curious, because the management team sounds like it's, it's you and your husband, the mm -hmm. office manager is now helping internally a lot of the process. Mm -hmm. Did you see more like a, is there like, you know, VP of say another salesperson um, or is that the estimator? Is that, Definitely that a salesperson. Um, the estimating process within the landscaping industry is definitely getting more competitive. Mm -hmm. People like to see 3D drawings. They like to see 3D designs. Yeah. Um, so we do have, we're lucky enough to have somebody on our staff who is actually going to school for that and is doing that for us. Wow. Um, so I could see us needing in the future an estimator, a 3D designer, and maybe an operations um, hmm. Somebody to run the operations, keep the guys going. Yeah. T talking about like operations in it. Do, do you try to promote a certain culture or how does that work? Because you don't have a big team. So it's kind of nice where 13 mm -hmm. or, or, you know, a couple more here or there where you can, you know, uh, really kind of keep a tight culture going. Um, do you do, what do you do for that? I mean, that's, that's important in the, you know, whether it's, you know, um, creating core values that they all kind of adhere to and whether it's getting together as a team, is there some, some of those activities that you guys try to do? We do. Um, we definitely try to do employee appreciation events. Mm -hmm. So um, probably about four times a year, we try to get the guys either, maybe it's a, just a lunch. Hey, come back to the shop. We're going to feed you, you know, mm -hmm. or, just to say thank you or hey we're gonna pause and we're gonna go out we're gonna go do something fun all together where we can just hang out and like get to know each other or continue building our relationships together as a team we like to kind of consider ourselves as as a big family I guess you could say kind of try to keep it family oriented um and then a lot of the times too um you know we do we do training and things to kind of keep our guys in the know and things like that too. Um, yeah, just really yeah. just making sure that they know they're appreciated. And sometimes that can be as simple as a thank you. And other times it can, it can be as big as, Hey, we notice you, we see you, you're a hard worker. You may have only been with us for like three to six months, but you know, it may not be raise time, but we want to give you a raise because we see your work ethic. We see uh -huh. what we're doing and just making sure that the customer gives a compliment or if someone else on the team is like, wow, they're really doing a good job, you know, just always making sure they're recognized and appreciated for the work that they're doing. So. How, how difficult is it to scale when like you do a lot of hardscaping, so there's a lot of design that's has to happen, whether, whether it's patios and uh, water features and walls and stuff. A lot of, it sounds like your, your um, husband does a lot of that now, right? Um, yes. It's how difficult is it to bring someone else in to, to do that as well. So it doesn't just, you know, it's all on his plate. Mm -hmm. um, is that is that difficult to find someone to do that or even to train people to do that? It must be. Yeah. Yes, it's difficult. Um, I always say we're in the business of selling him. We're in the business of selling his ideas. He's the face of the company, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. Our customers trust him 100%. They're the person he talks to at the beginning of the project, during the day, and at the end of the project, you know, when they have questions. They certainly talk to our foremans as well. But yeah, yeah it's definitely finding somebody he trusts that he can work with and finding somebody who has his same style, which can be difficult when you have like almost 30 years of experience in the landscaping sure. industry. You know, you kind of have seen it all, done it all. It's a little just more difficult to find somebody who has that experience. But, you know, sometimes it's good to bring different people in and get new ideas at the same time. So. Yeah. Do you guys meet as a uh, like a regular, like a strategy planning sessions, whether it's, you know, whether it's annually or weekly or monthly, is there, you know, a sit down that's not, not necessarily you're talking about projects and clients, but more like company, like where do we want to go this year or this quarter and 
who do we mean who do we need to hire and what kind of projects should we look be looking at is there that level or is a lot of it falling on your shoulders to kind of a lot of it is kind of me just saying hey i think we need to hire somebody i see a need do you think that um you would be comfortable having someone else come in and like do the estimating with you Mm -hmm. um do the drawing um but you know a lot of our conversations since we are married and we are together (laughs) all of the time happen at night or on the weekends or you know in our free time we tend to talk about where we're going with life when we talk about family or business or whatever it kind of is all together so we don't really take the time to have an off location meeting or anything like that or plan it because I feel like we're always talking about it so yeah, which could be good and bad, I guess, right? As, yes, <laughs> I would agree. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. I know when I know when I, I started my business in you know accounting, outsourced bookkeeping, and a lot it was more or less a um and I always say this, like a lifestyle company. It was like growing and it was just to support my lifestyle to to live, to have a paycheck, I guess, and be my own boss. But at some point, like I I looked at it like i want to scale this and that's when i started like you mentioned systems i started putting in systems and trying to hire the right people and being like real intentional like okay this year i want to grow x percent or i want to go after these type of clients Mm -hmm. and i think it's like a switch that happens you know when you realize like hey it's not just kind of me and trying to grow you know bring people in around me so I'm just wondering in that journey, because I think that happens to everybody. Like, well, there are, I think there's some people who start a company with an idea, like I'm going to grow this and sell it or, you know, do whatever, go public. And then there is people probably like, maybe like me or even you, where you start a company around a passion. Like it's not, you, your husband probably was a landscaper, I assume, right? Who you went to school for that or maybe yeah, not? <laughs> he didn't go to school for that. And his mother said, even when he was a child, she would give him like a packet of seeds. Okay. <laughs> would, you know, play with them, plant them. And his flowers always look better than hers. She says, so <laughs> that's funny. It's kind of always been something yeah. he's always been interested in. Yeah. So. Yeah. So I just, in that journey of trying to grow, you know, it seems like every company gets to a point where I could just kind of stay at this level and just bring on new clients and, just kind of organically grow. And then there's like, Hey, I want to kind of be a, you know, $5 million company, a $10 million company or whatever it is. And, and then just go to start going down that path. It, like where, where do you see yourself and your husband even on that path as you're trying to grow? I because- feel like we're just there and we're yeah. just realizing it. And we're just opening the door to the thought of what's next and what the potential is. And we're excited about what's next. Definitely. Um, where we have our commercial space, there's potential to move into this space next door. And that's something that I think we both really want, um, but there has to be the right time and opportunity for that as well. Um, so yes, we definitely want to grow. Um, we want to double our size, I would say, and probably stop there, you know, (laughs) Um, but we've also had a lot of opportunities in this past year and I've been in talks with people who have wanted us to acquire their businesses. So it's always something we're open to doing as long as it fits something that we feel like is a good addition to our current business. So, yeah, Yeah. I mean, it is a good strategy. I had, I talked to somebody on an earlier podcast that that's his strategy on to grow is to, you know, acquisitions. And as you mentioned, it has to fit like he, his um, big thing was really people and culture. They had to be the right culture and the right fit from a personnel standpoint. The numbers like they, yeah, they probably made sense. They were bringing in revenue, but it was the people um, mm-hmm. that was really important in, in his model. So, yeah. yeah. And for us, it would be definitely a company who values hard work, you know, work ethic, basically, um, um, is passionate about what they did and were successful at what they're doing mm-hmm. um, for many, many years. And then just quality and craftsmanship, you know, they care about what they're putting out there and what they're providing to their customers. So. Yeah. Do you do you guys do a lot um, with marketing or is it a lot of referrals and word of mouth? 
Word of mouth and landscaping is your number one way to get customers. Um, we do marketing. I don't know if you're familiar with, we call them home shows here where mm -hmm. um, different people run a show and they bring vendors in and we literally set up a booth of a hardscapes. We do retaining walls and a waterfall. Like a little tiny one. Yeah. yeah. It's big, actually. We have six booths where a normal person oh, can wow. have okay. one. So we do a huge landscaping and we show people what we can do and what our work looks like. And, you know, if they're interested in having an estimate, then we'll go out and give them an estimate and go from there. And I would say those two are probably the main ways where we get our business we always want to reinforce what we're putting out there. So if people are seeing us at a home show or, you know, they're getting our name word of mouth, we do like to, to advertise on television and we try to use television when it works for our industry. You know, there's peaks and valleys in landscaping. We can't dig in the ground in January, February, March, it's frozen December in Nebraska sometimes. Um, but so we always try to reiterate that through TV, um, billboards, we do things like that. We do uh, try to do quite a bit of social media and things like that mm -hmm. as well. So yeah, um, we do quite a bit of advertising and we, like I said, we try to do it when it gets to that point in the year when you know you're going to need to get your next wave of sales, you know, so you want to hit it in the spring, you want to hit it right before the fall hits and then just cycle that through every single year. So how do you deal with that um, seasonality, especially with your, um, with your team? So if you don't have work for them in some of these months where it's, you know, you, you can't, is it, you know, do you do it? I, I have clients that they, they lay their people off and then hire them again. And some people they move to like, you know, like I have an asphalt company and they, they do snow plowing in the winter um, and try to keep people busy. So I, do you have those issues where because of seasonality, you have to work with, um, you know, dealing with the employees and keeping them on staff or not? Yes. So we have full time and part time employees right now. I think we have six full time and the rest are part time. Mm -hmm. um, but well, eight, eight full time. The rest are part time. But so the full time guys like our foremans and our hardscape guys who work you know, 40 plus hours a week. We actually keep them on all winter. We do snow removal, but it it's not a consistent type of work. So we stay busy with shop worker, uh, repainting trailers, fixing trailers, fixing wheelbarrows, you know, just preparing for the next season. Um, honestly, it keeps us busier than most would think. Um, and then the part-time, a lot of the part-time help, they go to college, so they like to increase their schedule in the winter um, at school. So they work a few less hours and, you know, it works out. It works great. Um, we try not to lay our employees off. We honestly never have since we started our business. We keep them on. We just say a maximum 40 hours a week. You know, that's what we can guarantee in the winter. Nothing yeah. more, nothing less, unless you have to do snow removal. So no, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. And then we try to give them like big blocks of time off. Sometimes it's paid, sometimes it's unpaid. So like, for example, around the holidays, we usually give them off between Christmas and New Year's. They get that whole time off and we just pay them. They need a break. They get to go be with their families anyways. When people are generally going to be in and out of the office, no matter what, you know, so we try to give them time off to kind of recharge their batteries and use winter as a way to just kind of rest too nice. well, at least you don't have to lay anyone off which is great it is. yeah yeah okay. so here's a uh a question for you so if let's say somebody handed you a a, a check for i don't know a million dollars and said okay we want you to go grow your business what what would you do with it well you can't take it home you can't take it out as a salary <laughs> and you have to like do something to scale your business what, what would it what would it be? Or a couple things, I guess. Excuse me. I would definitely add one or two more hardscape crews and go into different markets that we're currently not into, ones that are maybe a little more lucrative or a little more challenging. But it takes a lot of money when you think about having to 
buy another vehicle, potentially buying another trailer, buying all the hand tools, all the power tools, everything those crews need in order to do their job on a daily basis. I mean, we're not even opposed to traveling from state to state and having crews that do that as well. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm passionate about maintenance for our customers. I think maintenance is an important aspect of the landscaping and hardscaping industry. And there's not a whole lot of people who like to do that kind of work. A lot of companies stick to what can be easier or more profitable. Not that maintenance isn't profitable, but, you know, I think it's an important thing to offer all of our customers as well. So, yeah, it seems like maintenance, when you think about it, you could put them on like a um, an annual payment plan so that you're getting cash flow in the, the, the months that you're slow. But it yep. all goes towards you, you break it out over the so you get the cash throughout the year. So, yeah, that's exactly what we do with our big maintenance contracts. We list out all the services that we're going to provide, what's in scope and what's out of scope on our maintenance contract, what, you know, that cost is going to be and basically divide it by a 12 month period. And they just make monthly payments if that's yep. what fits them, if they want to do, you know, once a quarter, you know, we're open to whatever they want to do and what fits with their their you know schedule yeah. as well yeah. so, yeah. No, I, I ask about like when i asked about the you know a million dollars because i think a lot of people i've worked with they don't it seems like they don't think big enough that like oh i i want to you know go buy this vehicle or hire that one person but but then when you say well if somebody handed you a big check for like million or five million it's like all of a sudden boom it's like oh i would expand i would go into this market you know bring on this product and become a you know you know expert in turf or whatever right so we don't offer that i would start doing so it's always it's always interesting to see um how people think you know when the when there's like a big dollar amount there so yeah. yeah, I feel like we've been in business long enough. We know the things that we want to do, mm-hmm. but we also know the things that we do not want to do. And you kind of dip your toe in the water here and there throughout your um, years as an entrepreneur. And you just mm-hmm. realize, you know, that just doesn't fit with our crew. That doesn't fit with who we are as a business either. And you just decide, okay, we tried it, you know, move on. So yeah, that, that's actually a good point. I don't even want to gloss over it because like for, on the accounting side, we when I first started my business back in 2003, like I took every client that needed a bookkeeper. It's like, you know, whether it was a restaurant or a doctor or a distributor. And then we realized certain industries we really didn't enjoy working in or we weren't good at. But at the beginning, you're right. You know, as an entrepreneur, you kind of like test the waters with like so many different things. And you, you, you realize, oh, yeah. You have to come to the conclusion, like, this is what I'm really good at. And I'm going to just go after it and be the best at it. And that's how you grow. You know, that's, that's what I've seen. Yes, so what, definitely. yeah. What, what excites you about the future? Uh, just in general, a new products or new like growth or just, you know, yeah. Long-term. I think uh, something we've done recently is partner with a vendor who has our they've just introduced us to so many new things in our business. They helped us get synced up. They helped us learn about 3D digital drawing for our customers. They kind of just offer everything. And we've become what's called an authorized contractor for them. So most of the time when we install a job, we're going to suggest their products first. And honestly, it's just kind of been a game changer for our business. We've got a lot of opportunities um, because of that. So we're just kind of looking forward to see where that takes us and where that leads us. Um, it's just been a fun ride the last year, and this is our second year doing it. Um, you know, we got to take our employees to be part of their best of the best awards in um, Kansas City, you know, just stuff that's fun to reward the hard work that our team does. So, yeah. No, that's great. I, I've done the same. Just just uh we partnered with some like third party software that integrates with like a quickbooks or quickbooks online and and just by that integration it just opens up the door to other markets other clients yes. referrals um yeah and it's you know things don't get get stale 
That's yeah, it. but it helps you take your business to the next level, whether it be your clientele, mm -hmm. your products, your installation techniques, whatever it may be. You just don't realize it until you, you know, want to say shake their hand and make the deal and move forward. Right. And then you just kind of enjoy the ride and see where it takes you. So yeah, no, that's awesome. That's that's awesome. Um so just tell tell us about yourself. Like, so are you from Nebraska? Uh, I am born and raised in Nebraska, and I'm darn proud of it, let me tell you. I grew up on a farm. Um, it was a, I mean, hard work is basically just a part of your everyday life. So to keep busy from six in the morning to midnight every day is not unheard of for me. I like to work. I like hard work. And I feel like growing up on the farm really kept that quality with me. And it's something I continue to carry with me constantly. Mm -hmm. So um, we have four acres where we live. So okay. it's yeah. A lot. <laughs> yeah, it's another hobby, I guess you could say. <laughs> um, but I like to be outside with my family um, and just enjoy the outside because you can imagine being a landscaper, we've kind of turned our yard into a little bit of an oasis and, and our hangout nice. spot. So it's fun to be out there. We also garden. I love to garden. And like I said, I'm old school because I grew up on a farm. We grow a big garden. We plant our tomatoes and our corn and everything. And I take all of that and I preserve it for the entire winter. And then we wow. eat that the entire year. I don't know how I find time for yeah, it, but yeah, I manage to do it. <laughs> and you also have a family. <laughs> it's not just yes. you. So. Yeah, yeah. Yep. I have uh, four-year-old twins who are about to be five and they definitely keep me on my toes. So. Yeah, you know, I, I don't know how you do it. Just listening to you is making me tired. So <laughs> up early. Up follow early. me around for a day. You'll see. Right. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. gosh. Yeah. So, um, yeah. You no, know, this this has been great. Uh, if people, oh, actually, one other question. You didn't go to school for landscaping. So, what did you, what, oh. what's your background as far as your education? I'm curious about that. So I went through high school. I tried college at three different colleges and my major was actually a bachelor's in fine arts. So okay. I, feel like I have kind of done the complete 180 or 360, whatever you want to say. Um, school was not my forte. It was not for me. I have kind of marched to the beat of my own drum my entire life. So I feel like being an entrepreneur just kind of fits the mold for that for me. So I feel like I'm right where I'm supposed to be now. So. Nice. And do you, one final question, I promise. Um, do you <laughs> get advice from, like, are you part of a group, uh, some kind of mentors, um, anything where that can, because, so, so, you know, whether to help you just even grow, you and your husband grow the company, like, do you go somewhere for advice? Like, do you follow any other podcast? Do you, yeah, I'm just curious, just for your own professional development. Just what, how you do that? I just started listening to podcasts uh, a couple years ago. Um, mm -hmm. As you can imagine, I don't have a whole lot of time to sit down and watch right. TV yeah, exactly. or listen to things. So I'm not very consistent when it comes to that. But we've always turned to people who we know are successful in our industry or who are um, successful in their own businesses in the past. I honestly think some of our customers are some of the best people we've talked to and learned from because um, they are some successful business owners as well. So we turn to them. Nice. We turn to some of our vendors who have been in this industry for a really long time. And it's just finding people to talk to and get their ideas or learn from. So, No, that's great. Because um, I, I found that just in my own business, very valuable to kind of, you know, pick the brains of people who I trust and they're in my industry and some, and even people who aren't in my industry because um, businesses all kind of function the same. We all hire, we all market, we all have accounting to do. Um, we all need issues with cash. We have issues with cash flow. Um, so mm -hmm. yeah, this in my, my own banker refers me to a bunch of other businesses too so it's 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 awesome yeah. um, it's always good to pause and learn from other people so. absolutely yep. so where can people find you if they want to even connect and learn more just about your business or just you or just to, to connect well if you want to follow my family i'm on instagram and facebook as danny friesen 
Um, if you want to follow Friesen Landscaping, we're on Instagram and Facebook as Friesen Landscaping. And then I also have a page on Facebook and Instagram called The Contained Planter, where I show people the pots and things that I do um, for customers as well. So, yeah. All right. That's cool. And uh, Friesen is F-R-I-E-S-E-N Landscaping, right? So to Yeah. Cool. Yep. Well, this has been awesome, and I want to thank you. Um, I want to thank um, our listeners and people who are maybe watching this on YouTube. I encourage you, hopefully, to like it, to share it. Hopefully, you learned something. Um, and again, thank you, Danny. Uh, I want to. I do want to like maybe reach out to you like in a year and see where you're at. See if you're like at. 20 people and four or five crews and you That's know cool. yeah. 10,000 square foot building and yeah. you start you're selling supplies to other landscapers who knows right so yeah, who knows yeah well thank you for your time i appreciate you thank asking you me. Yep. and this has been another episode of leaders who scale and that wraps up another episode thank you for joining for show notes and other episodes, visit us at leaderswhoscale.com. Leaders Who Scale is sponsored by Siegel Solutions, providing world-class services and cutting-edge tools that help businesses grow and succeed.